One cannot study the Revolutionary War and have a complete understanding without first also doing a study on the life of Francis Marion. Many of us know Francis Marion by his nickname, the Swamp Fox. Now, Walt Disney did a series on the Swamp Fox, and more recently we saw Mel Gibson portray the Swamp Fox in the movie The Patriot. <laughs> Francis Marion was a Brigadier General during the Revolutionary War. But he did not fight as most of us could imagine a modern warfare. Instead, many say that he was the grandfather of guerrilla warfare. You see, after George Washington had fought the British to a standstill, the British understood that they needed to come up with a new strategy, and what they did is they ended up taking a, a whole bunch of troops down to Savannah, Georgia, and to Charleston, South Carolina, and they were just going to create a lot of turmoil and march their way up. And they hoped that through this second front that they could divide George Washington's efforts and subdue the American colonists. And they were generally successful. The general who was down there in South Carolina lost. The next general who came down there ended up losing. It wasn't until George Washington sent Nathaniel Green that the battle was turned. But in the meantime, the reason why the British were not successful is because of Francis Marion and his guerrilla warfare tactics of striking fast, of having an awesome network of information, have a quick skirmish with the British at a key point. And it was because of these lightning fast attacks that it kept the British down in South Carolina for a prolonged period of time and gave Washington and the Continental Congress enough time to find a general who could come down and see success. Weems, who wrote this particular biography in 1824, this is considered the first biography of the Swamp Fox, got his information from one of Francis Marion's closest friends, a man who fought side by side with Francis Marion. Now, when this particular book came out in 1824, Francis Marion's friend said he wanted to have nothing to do with that book. And the reason for this is because the author took a little bit too much liberties in juicing up the story, making it more romantic, making it more uh, adventuresome. But what is interesting is Sims, who probably has written the most uh, detailed biography on Francis Marion says that, well, yes, Weems took some liberties. He didn't take as many liberties in this book as he did when he wrote that George Washington cut down a cherry tree in his biography on the life of Washington. So the thing is, if you want to read the first biography of Francis Marion, then you know, The Life of Marion is a, is a good book. In fact, I learned a lot from this book. I actually found this book very, very interesting. I found it interesting because so often when I read the Revolutionary War, you just hear about the atrocities of the British generals and what they did. But peppered throughout this book, there were times where the American colonists came up to, a, came up to Francis Marion and said, hey, you need to show this particular general a little bit more uh, mercy, or you need to show this particular officer a little bit more mercy, because he is not like Tarleton. He paid for his mill. He actually took care of our wounded. You know, he w actually was more of a gentleman. Yes, there, there are people like Tarleton who wreaked havoc all over South Carolina, 
destroying the lives of many citizens. But not all British officers were animals. And I actually found that quite interesting in reading this particular book to actually get a little bit of an understanding of various officers of the British government, how they were not all the same. Of course, one of these days, I'll get around to uh, doing a video book report of my favorite biography of Francis Marion. But for today, The Life of Marion by Weems. This is the first biography of the Swamp Fox. And I think every American should read this book. It's not very long. It's very well written. It's full of a lot of short stories. If you want to understand the Revolutionary War, if you want to understand why George Washington was able to win the Revolutionary War, even though the British had him on two fronts, then you got to understand the Swamp Fox and his impact of keeping the British tied down in South Carolina.